Welcome back to another episode of This Week at River Ridge. We hope everyone has had a good week and has a great Valentine's Day. Today's topics will include a recap of Spirit Week, Manny's Share Night for Seniors, and the history behind Valentine's Day. Last week was Spirit Week. Thanks everyone for dressing up throughout the week. The classes spent the week decorating the hallways in their class unity theme. On Friday, the high school students were given a free day with games and crafts in different classrooms, followed by a movie in the gym. The entire school met up for a pep rally in the gym where the cheer and dance girls performed along with the varsity boys. The hit game of the rally was egg roulette with Mr. Books who cracked two eggs over his head giving Mr. Foles the win. Here's to Jake with more on this hilarious game. Thanks girls. So last week was spirit week and on Friday all the high schoolers had a fun day. We did a lot of fun stuff, but I bet we can all agree the best part was when Mr. Books and Mr. Foltz played egg roulette. So, this is how it works. There's 12 eggs, 4 raw, 8 boiled. Each time, they pick an egg at random, and they have to break it over their head. First that breaks two raw eggs over their head loses. So, let's see what happens. Whoa, now that was an achy ending. Thanks, Jake. That game was so fun to watch. We don't have school on Monday, but the River Ridge Seniors will be having a share night at Manny's Pizza in Savannah. A portion of the sales will go to the Senior Class Trip Fund. The seniors will be working from 5 to 9 p.m. However, the donations collected will be from 4 till close. Please support your seniors by, by, by buying a meal that night at Manny's Pizza. There are a few different theories on how Valentine's Day came about. One is that Valentine's Day is celebrated after St. Valentine. He was a Catholic priest that, behind the church's back, would marry young couples in secret. After being discovered by the church, he was sentenced to jail where he fell in love with a girl. Not long after jail was he sentenced to death. In his last letter to his love, he signed it, From Your Valentine. Now Valentine's Day is a holiday to celebrate the people or special someone that you love. On average, 150 million Valentine's Day cards are sent annually. That makes Valentine's Day the second most popular card sending holiday after Christmas. On average, men spend $130 on gifts for women on Valentine's Day. That's more than double what women claim to spend. Worldwide, 50 million roses are given for a Valentine's Day each year. Now let's hear from Dale with the weather. Thanks girls. This last week we have had great weather. However, this Valentine's Day weekend will not be as lovely. It actually resembles what my Valentine's Day will be like, cold and slightly overcast. 
Today we have a high of 23 and a low of 5. For Valentine's Day, we have a high of 10 and it will drop down to negative 6. Sunday, we have a high of 17 and a low of 8. No school Monday on account of President's Day, which will be a high of 28 and a low of 11, with a possibility of snow. Back to you girls. Thanks, Dale. Now here's the sports. The girls wrapped up their season this past Wednesday. They played against East Dubuque at Galena in the first round of regionals. With a rough start to the game, the girls made a killer comeback, being just four points short of a tie with East Dubuque with two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, the buzzer rang with the final score being 34-43 with an East Dubuque victory. The seniors played their last game, and we are proud of each and every one of them. Thanks to Courtney Spear, Louisa Williams, Nicole Tees, Morgan Wheelwright, and Caleb Brassman for their four years of RRSM basketball. That's all for this season. Now to the boys' basketball news. The boys' basketball team has been going through a rough point in their season with a four-game streak of losses. Coach Albright and the Wildcats had high hopes on Thursday night's game against Warren. We will have more on that game at a later date. The Wildcats will play again Tuesday at home against West Carroll for their senior night. The seniors this year are Brendan Dauphin, Alex Claypeck, Matt Baston, Sam Merkel, Matthew Clipper, and our foreign exchange student, Filippo Gambarini. If you can't make the game, check out RRTV, as the game will be broadcasted that night. Then the boys play at Stockton on Thursday. The week after, the boys will be starting their regional games on their home court. As always, wish them luck. Now back to the girls in the news. Thanks, guys. Now here's to Tara. Hey, did you invent the airplane? Because you seem right for me. <laughs> hey, I seem I lost my phone number. Can I have yours, please? Are you religious? Because you are the answer of all my prayers. <laughs> hey, Catherine. Yeah? I thought happiness starts with an age. Why? Mine does start with an you. <laughs> hey, are you a camera? Because every time I look you, I smile. Hey, you know that if you would be a tropical fruit, you would be a pineapple. Hey, hey I, I want to live in your sock, so I will be with you all step on the way. Awesome. Hey, are you an interior decorator? Because when I saw you, the entire room became beautiful. Hey, Polio, why is Italy shaped like a boot? <laughs> Trigger, you're not supposed to talk. We might as well say the punchline now. Go can ahead. You can all that junk in a tennis shoe. Hey, can I go? <laughs> Which way are we walking? Okay. Let me follow us. <laughs> Done. Done. Damn, bro. You need a library book? Because I want to check you out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tara. Now here's the current event. Hi, I'm Peyton, and this is Trey, and we're going to do current events today. The captain of Costa Canada is guilty of manslaughter and the other charges related to the ship's fatal wreck in January 2012 of the Italian coast. A judge announced Wednesday night capping a tumultuous 19-month trial and providing a little more closer closure for dozens of grieving families. The judges apparently sided with the prosecutors and sentenced Shanid Tino to to spend 16 years in prison and to pay court costs. It's understandable when a stunning event overwhelms a career-defining event. The way it didn't oh, hey, XLIX eight days ago. We spent three or four days compelling on Pete Carroll for a call that seems that still seems fool foolhardy. A decision that cost Seattle a second straight Super Bowl victory and a decision vital to the fourth Super Bowl title of the Belichick Brady era. Heck. Matt Lohrer of the Today Show flew to Seattle and sat down with Carroll for 20 empathetic minutes at Air Friday. So that was day five of the Seattle regeneration. Now it's day eight, and it's time for the New England quarterback, Tom Brady, to get his due. Offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels, too. An important contributor, Shane Vereen, Julian Edmond, and Robin Gronkowski. Thanks, girls. Mr. Downs would like to remind his sociology class that they have a test on Wednesday. Mr. Dibber wants to tell the juniors that they need to get going on their Illinois 
history fair projects. And Mrs. Smith wants everyone to know that Manny's night is on Monday, and she still needs seniors to sign up to bring baked goods. She also still needs slideshow pictures from a few seniors. That's all for announcements. Thanks, guys. Now here's some Mr. Curry with the joke of the week. Hey, Catherine, why did the bee get married? <laughs> why did the bee get married? Because he found his honey. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, Mr. Curry. We aren't having an episode next week due to it being a short week. But anyways, Felicia, how would you describe this episode? It was so lovely. Thank you for joining us with this lovely episode, and we'll see you soon. Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day! Day.